All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Your Life, God's Word. We are back with another episode, and we are continuing on in Genesis chapter 1, going all the way back to the book of beginnings and doing a discussion on some of these very foundational and important topics. So please, 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 please let us know if you're enjoying this uh, this series, if you have any thoughts on this, if you uh, have any questions as well, and definitely let's do our part. If you can uh, give to the ministry, that would be awesome. I guess you have not because you asked not. So uh, I've, I've seen a lot of people that do these podcasts and stuff, just throw it out there for a way to support the ministry. I don't know that I've ever done that. Uh, if I have, I don't remember. So you can go to breadbreakers.com and check on the donate page uh, and you can give there to support the ministry. But if you you know if you don't have any money, or it, it, Walmart and KFC and Red Lobster and you know the movie theaters got all your money, then you can just share, like, comment, leave a review, all that good stuff that costs no money, and you can still um, be a part of what's going on with the uh, with the ministry. And, and help us in that way. We are at the end. We're toward the end here of Genesis chapter 6, and uh, we have come through the original uh, creation of everything that is, except, except the creation of man, and that's where we're going to pick up today. And I think there's some good stuff that we can draw out of here things that will carry us through into some further discussion. And if you'll recall, right, we, we've done some, some different things. We went through that book, The Return of the Gods. Uh, we, we, we did some, some, some discussion and, 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 and uh, diving into uh, so, some of the kind of spiritual warfare, kingdom-related kingdom spiritual warfare things when we did this stuff on Isaiah and Ezekiel and all that. We, uh, all of these things really do tie into one another. Uh, they're all in that same sphere of kingdom, true kingdom-mindedness, uh, God's kingdom in heaven and in earth. And so I don't, I don't want people to think this is just kind of moving on from those other things. It's identifying some of the issues, identifying the, 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 the spiritual warfare side of things, but also going back to what is God's intent for mankind, for the earth? Uh, what, 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 what is going on there? And I think, I think people are seeing that connection and beginning to, to realize there's more for the people of God than just get saved and then fly around in a holding pattern for decades uh, and, until we're, we're dead or Jesus comes back, and then that's just kind of the life of a Christian. I, I think that is uh, very frustrating for a lot of people. I don't think it holds, um, it holds people or captivates people very much. Um, it doesn't give a whole lot of purpose. Now, there's some purpose, you know, oh, well, we, we can win other people and that kind of thing, but and it, it doesn't give, like, directional purpose. Like, we are striving for a specific thing. It's Instead, it's kind of like we come into the kingdom, we just kind of sit around on the couch and wait and hope other people, you know, we can get other people to join us on the couch. Um, I, I will say this as well. I, I personally, personally, I think this is one reason why a lot of men... Um, are are less engaged with the kingdom of God than than women. You know, men are much more like task goal oriented. Like, you know, point me in the direction of the kill, and I'll go I'll go kill that thing and bring it home for dinner, right? But if you just say kind of, wow, we had a great service, power of God moved, word was taught, come back next week and let's do it all again. Woo, we're just we're just man, we're just maturing and maturing even more. Next week. I mean, after 25 years, 30 years, 40, 60 years, that, that's kind of all there is? Um, that doesn't sound too appealing, <laughs> right? And, and again, to a lot of men who are more 
Uh, is it all men? Is it no ladies or goal oriented? No, but by and large, we're created a certain way and we'll see God created men and, and, and women differently and all that. But by and large, I, I think that's part of the issue is that, you know, we don't, we don't just want to be sitting around. And so men kind of, I, I don't want to say lose interest, but I, I am going to say lose interest. Um, and that's been my experience in, um, in watching uh, as I've grown up, um, seen men and women in, in church atmospheres uh, across multiple different churches and stuff, uh, pastoring, working with people, it, it just, you kind of see that, and I think this goes into it. And if I'm correct, it would also make perfect sense why Satan would so radically attack uh, the ideas that I'm presenting here. Because he doesn't want people to have that that goal orientation, that purpose for the kingdom of God. I don't mean like, you know, live your best life purpose. I mean a purpose for the kingdom. He doesn't want that. He doesn't really want you saved at all. But if you're going to be, then at least don't be any impact on his, on his plans, his kingdom. Don't actually take the kingdom of God and go and, you know, try to make Jesus ruling. You know, well, try to spread the rule of Christ you know, as he reigns in authority, do what Jesus said, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you're not doing that, Satan's not super bothered by your presence. You know, the fact that you're going to go to heaven or whatnot. So again, I think it all ties in. I think it has a lot to do with uh, the, the mission and the purpose of the church. And I think we need to kind of get that back. I think we need to get the purpose and the mission back on track at least in the west i just in, in the west it just seems like there's a a lot of that lacking and missing in the church uh now again this is not some i'm flying solo i'm, I'm the only person in the world seeing this there are a lot of people who are who also have seen this for decades like they they didn't miss this they're seeing this they're preaching it now some people get flack and stuff for it but uh, I think the, the true kingdom-minded church has always been there. The true um, Christ, uh, you, know, the, you know, the term all of Christ for all of life, um, Christ's reign and rule. Uh, people have had this since the beginning of the church. But I think over time, there's been times where it's on the forefront, and then there's times where it's on the back burner about to get snuffed out, and then it's like on the forefront. I think that happens, and I don't think that's just worldwide either. I think there's parts of Christianity that really have it strong at times, and then this over here, they have it weak, and then it kind of flip-flops. But I think through history, God's always had a group of people that really see this and really push this. So let's, what is the this? Let's, let's dive into it. I am really doing a lot of build-up here. Let's go ahead and just get to it. Uh, we are in Genesis 1. I'm going to go to verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. A couple of things here. One, God says, Let us make man in our image. Uh, I think, along with many others. This is, uh, there's, there's a couple of opportunities here. There's a couple of things here. One is, you know, God is, God is speaking, uh, to, um, uh, this, like people call it the, the divine council. Uh, he's talking to, uh, not, not so much just angels. That's the, I think people say that, but you know, but he, I mean, he is, he's talking to the heavenly hosts, right? Uh, man, what is the, what is the Hebrew term? Um, Bene Elohim or something like that. I, I have to look it up, but it's, you know, the sons of God, the, the ones who are referred to in like Job, Psalm, a few different places, those that can be called Elohim, but they are, uh, they are not Yahweh. They are not the, you know, the eternal self, self-existing one, but they, they are in his likeness. They are those he created before he created man. And so he, they are in the likeness of God as well. And so he is saying, hey, 
let's make man in our image, right? If we were, let's, let's, let's roll it back. Let's pretend God created other men on other planets, but he included Adam in the discussion, right? He makes Adam in his image. And then he says, hey, let's make, let's make some more men on another planet. Let's make some Martians on, on Mars in our image because, right? Adam's in the image of God. These people would be both in the image of God and in the image of Adam because Adam's in the image of God, that, right? That, that's kind of what I'm saying. If you came in at that clip, I'm not saying there are Martians made in the image of God. <laughs> I'm saying I'm using an analogy. I'm making something up. But anyway, so he turns to these sons of God. He turns, you know, the heavenly host, the angels, whatever. And he and he's talking to them. Others, right? He's talking in the in the sense of his majesty. Right? He uh let us make man. Uh well, at, when a king, right, proclaims, we are gonna do this, he's talking in the in the realm of his majesty. He's the one making the decision. He's going to do it. But guess what? He is he is representing the kind of the us. It's like if you get a bunch of friends over and you're like, hey, let's go grab a pizza. But what you really mean is I'm going to go get the pizza and bring it back. Let's get some pizza. But you're the one that picks up the phone. You're the one that calls. You're the one that pays. But it's for everybody that's there. Let's. He's talking in a col sort of a collective sense, even though he's not meaning there's two or three or five or 10 there actually, you know, in the process. I've heard, I've heard some people say, I don't even know if this is scholarly or anything like that. I just heard, you know, man is both earthy and spiritual, right? He's got, he's in the image of God, but you could, you know, in a way say he's, he's the image of the earth as well. And actually you go to the New Testament and Paul talks about, you know, the first Adam, he's earthy. Um, and so I've heard some say, He's talking to, he is speaking, right, to, to the earth he just created. And, hey, we're going to make man in our image, kind of combining the spiritual image of God, the, that aspect, with the dust of the ground. Um, again, just a few different things. I'm not sure that it really makes sense to, like, fight or make up a huge fuss over this. But I personally believe, uh, or I lean toward uh, either the majesty or I really, I'd say maybe it's, maybe I'm 70% there and 30% in the majesty camp, but like it's more like 70%, you know, 75%. I think he's talking to this divine council because you see other places in the word of God where he goes to them, right? You talk about uh, in Job where the sons of God, right, are come before him. They've got this thing going on in, uh, in Kings. This is right off the top of my head, so I'm just kind of winging it <laughs> in Kings, where uh, God's like, hey, how, how do I get Ahab to uh, to get killed here? We got to figure out a way to, um, you know, get rain down judgment on him. And who's he talking to? He's talking to this this group that's there in his presence. And one of them comes and says, hey, I'll be a lying spirit. I'll go and tell his prophets to prophesy falsely, and he'll go into battle and get killed. Right. So again, we see that in the scripture. I lean that way. That's just you know. That's just how I see it. So that's just kind of a little whoop, quick rundown on that. But here's what I really want to get to, the second half of verse 26, and it says, and let them have dominion. Now, some people refer to this as like the dominion mandate. Uh, I, I, the mission of dominion, authority, rule in the earth, I believe that men were created just like the Bible says that we are created for dominion, that the earth is something that God has created and he has given mankind dominion in the earth. He's got the spiritual realm covered and he says, you know what, I've got this plan for the physical realm and I want my representatives, which is mankind, those in my image in this earthly place, I want them to have the dominion and the rule in that place. Now, are they uh, like autonomously just out there doing their own thing? They have dominion. God's like, yeah, whatever. I'm, peace out. I'm over here, you know, doing something else. No, they're they're exercising dominion as they are in alignment with God. And so it's God's authority and dominion and plan and will being exercised through his agents in the earth. And that is mankind. Now, if you think, forward a little bit. We'll, we'll get here, but I'll just kind of 
jump ahead, almost like a, in a movie, like where there's a, there's a, uh, you know, premonition or something. You can see where it's going, but then I oh, got to get back through the rest of the plot here. But let's go forward a little bit. What is that today? Well, today we see that in the ecclesia, right? God uh, implements the uh, the entire plan of the death, burial, resurrection, all that. And Jesus says in Matthew 16, on this rock, I'm going to build my church, my ecclesia. And guess what? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. I think that's important. But we look at, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the governing source. That's God's governing power in the earth. It's through the church. They have that dominion mandate. Adam kind of handed it over, right? He flubbed it up, for lack of a better term. Gave in, sinned. Jesus, that last Adam, right? He, right? He did not. And so that's why, again, Matthew 28, you can go and you see, I have all authority and power. Uh, I have all authority in heaven and earth, right? Go and make disciples and all that stuff. So that's kind of in the direction we're going, but this is in the very beginning. In the very beginning, God creates man for dominion. What dominion is that? We're not going to get into it today, but when we get into chapter 2, you'll see that he's given them specific instructions, some do's, some don'ts, right? All my friends that, you know, uh, hate, you know, oh, you know, they're just, you know d- churches are all about do's and don'ts. Well, when churches are all about do's and don'ts, that's when they become pharisaical and religious and an abomination. But to say that there aren't any do's and don'ts, uh, that is also religious. It's just loosey-goosey religious instead of righty tighty <laughs> religious, right? We, w- we don't want to be either one of those. We don't want to be either one of those extremes, but even in the Garden of Eden, it's blessed, just wonderful paradise. God has some things to do and some things not to do. Uh, and so mankind is supposed to exercise God's dominion in the earth, and that's what he's, he's doing here. And then in verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. So, again, right, it goes to the, he's talking to people and saying, Hey, Let's make man in our image after our likeness. And then it says, so God made man in his image. One, his image. So it makes sense that who he's talking to is they are already in the image of God. That would absolutely fit. Hey, let's make man in our image. The our, the others, are in the image of God. So when he goes and makes man in his image, that fits, because now we're all in the image of God. The sons of God that are in the heavenlies, right? The heavenly host, they are sons of God, and we are sons of God. We are all in the image of God. We happen to be earthly creatures. They happen to be spiritual creatures, right? So that's, we're all in the family of God. And that, you know, in a way, okay, I'm not trying to make us, you know, some crazy, like, you know, doctrine out of this or whatever, but in a way, right, the, the angels, it's like we're all part of God's, God's total family. You've got an earthly wing, you've got a a spiritual wing, right? But 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 we're all part of this family of God. So anyway, he created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Let's stop there. So he created them in a specific way. Male and female. God created us with differences. God created us with specific traits, specific characteristics. That's why, to me, it just just makes sense. When Satan opposes God, and he is against what God has done, he is against the good creation that God has made, it makes sense that this is one of the things that Satan would, would attack. It also makes double good sense, right? Kind of double down on it here, that if mankind is the creation that is set up for dominion, that Satan really wants to mess up mankind, right? And so he attacks this truth. Male and female is how we're created. 
Verse 28, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, right? Have dominion over it and have, well, it actually says, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Verse 29, and God said, behold, I have given you every plant, uh, every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to every thing that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything, God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Now we've already talked about how just reading the normal kind of just the way you read this, the 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 terminology of um, evening and morning, and again we could get into the use of these Hebrew words and how they're you know how they're used throughout the scriptures. But I just just the plain reading of this, right? Evening and morning, it seems like they're just literal days. God has all power. Why do we have to try and stretch this out when it doesn't seem that that is what the scriptures indicate? Uh, go back and, you know, a couple episodes ago, and that's what I, I, I talked about in that one, or maybe it was last episode. Uh, so then we have evening and morning, the sixth day, God has created man. What has he created man for? He has created man for a purpose, for dominion, for dominion. Go and multiply, fill the earth, have dominion over it, rule and reign, take the the kingdom of God that is uh, solely in the heavenlies, right? And now that I've created this physical place, physical creatures, now go and, and show forth my rule and my reign in that realm, right? So, this is the, the mandate of mankind. This is the mandate of mankind. Now, some might say, well, but didn't, didn't mankind like kind of, kind of mess that up? And so we, 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 can't, we can't do that anymore. We, the, uh, Adam and Eve, they sinned, and then there's the fall, and it's, I mean, it's all just, after that, it's all just downhill from there. I would, I would direct your attention to a couple of places, and we can build this out more, but um, let's just start with kind of a, a, a baseline here and really build, build on that in maybe a, a later episode. Let's go to, and I, I go here often, I, I really just love this uh, portion of Scripture because it really just hits home. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, you they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. Your Father who is in secret will reward you. So you're praying, and, and the Father is going to reward. He's going to answer those prayers. Right? Verse 7, And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases, as the Gentiles do, for they think they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Right? All right, so then he says, So, in verse 9, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Now, a lot of people are, are very familiar with that, and then they just kind of continue on, but they focus more on the, man, you know, that will be done. But, but it actually says in verse, uh, in verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done, be done, be done, <laughs> be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let me ask, is Jesus wanting us to pray impossible prayers that will never be answered in the affirmative? Or is he saying, hey, I want you to pray this, but 
but the father is going to always say no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know, I, I just think Jesus is saying, hey, this is a pattern of prayer. This should really be on the forefront of the prayer of who? Who should be praying this? The world? No, his church. We should be seeking the kingdom of God in a way that says, hey, Father, the way that you rule in heaven, we would like to see that on earth. He doesn't say, pray that the earth will be destroyed, that I will come back, and that then the Father's will will be done. He says, Father's will done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, no, I don't think anybody right, listening to this is supposed to like, oh yeah, when you go on to the next part, it says, give us this day our daily bread. Oh, no, 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 that's talking about when we're already in heaven, give us our bread. I don't think so. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. No, no, that's now. That's now. Give us our daily bread now, right? Forgive us our debts now. But, oh, your will be done on earth? No, 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 that's, that's sometime like a million years in the future. I don't think so. I think the very plain and very easy to understand reading of this scripture is that Jesus Christ expects us as the people of God to be seeking, to be praying for, to be praying for, seeking after God's rule and reign in the earth just like it is in heaven. Now, his will is not done, you know, one out of ten, four out of ten times in heaven. It is done in heaven. So, we should be praying that. My question to you is, is that how we think? Is that how we think? Is that what we really are looking for? Or are we really looking for, well, it's not going to happen, that's a bunch of bunk, but we can at least hopefully win a few people um, before it's all wrapped up and said and done. I think that is where a lot of, like the majority of Christians tend to be. A lot of uh, churches and leaders, that's how they teach. And I'm, again, I'm sorry for, you know, a lot of the people who are not leaders or not in that place. They don't even know any better. They don't even know, they, they, they don't even know that this other thing is an option. Like for, 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 for Christ to actually do what he said he is doing and going to do and have dominion and authority in the earth, they don't even have that concept because the leaders are not preaching that concept. The leaders are not showing people from the scripture that concept. And so, you know, I feel bad again for the people that don't know what they don't know, but hopefully you'll share this podcast. Hopefully you'll discuss it. Hopefully you'll look at these scriptures, ask questions if you have them, but hopefully this gets out to where people are starting to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe the church has a greater mandate than just to be this thing, an option over here on the side that happens to be able to go to heaven when we die. Maybe we should be a force in the earth to see the reign and rule of Jesus Christ happening in the earth, a.k.a. thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right? On earth. Now, I'm going to go back to the Old Testament because we, we, were, we were there in Genesis and, uh, you know, somebody brought up um, the, what, so, somebody listening just now brought up the, uh, the fact that Adam sinned. And so where's this dominion mandate then? Well, let's go to Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8 and verse 1 says, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. I wonder, does he still the enemy and the avenger? Or do the enemy and the avenger actually win, 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 win until God just has no other choice to, to, but to destroy the entire earth and like remake it? I wonder. Verse 3. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet, right? So he looks at the grandeur of the universe. He looks at all these things. He's wow, this is vast. This is incredible, right? Even with our modern technology in 2023, I mean, the the universe, even the depths of our own ocean here on earth are like vastly unexplored. There's so much there. And yet he says, but look at mankind. 
right? Verse five, you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. Wait, you have? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what he did. Verse six is the kicker. You have given him dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And then if we go to uh, Psalm 115, we see in verse 16, it says, the heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. So fast forward long past the fall of Adam, past Abraham, past the, the giving of the law with Moses and all that into the realm of the Psalms and the prophets, right? The Psalms and the prophets. And the psalmist is saying, no, the, the earth is, is, is given to man. Man has dominion in the earth, right? So, wait a minute. If man has dominion in the earth and Jesus brings mankind, he brings men into covenant, into the church, tells them to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that look like? What does that, how does that play out if we actually believe it, if we actually believe the Bible, if we actually do what Jesus said to go and do? How does that play out? What does that look like? I think it looks a lot different then the attitude, the mentality that the world's out there, the church just kind of pulls back into a cave somewhere. You know, the world's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until eventually we're, we're back into a corner. We've got enemies on all sides. We have no hope. It's all over. And then God just, you know, does a miraculous like rescue. What if it, what if that is actually not scriptural? What if actually God wants us to have dominion in the earth and walk in lockstep with the assignment from Jesus Christ and see his rule and his reign fill the earth, like Daniel 7 says, right? Like so many of the Psalms, like we see in the New Testament, in the Gospels and the Epistles <laughs> all over the place. What if we actually had that mindset instead of the defeatist, I hope I can win a few of my coworkers to Jesus and a few of my family members. What if we walked around with a, hey, wait a minute, Jesus is ruling and reigning. I'm going to align with him. He's got all authority. I'm going to pray with expectation and power. And I'm going to be an influence in all areas of, of life and culture. I'm going to bring Jesus to all areas, not all areas are Satan's except over here in my prayer closet, and I sure hope I get to go to heaven one day. I think that is the incorrect view. And when we go and we read Genesis, we see what God originally intended, and you don't see where he changed his mind. Again, I read Genesis, and you could say, well, but that's before the fall, and then God said no, you know, and then God kind of shifted gears or whatever. But, but then you go to Psalm, and you see Psalm 8, Psalm 115. This is long after the fall, and yet still singing, still talking about, still, still prophesying about man's dominion over the earth. I want to challenge us to have dominion, take that dominion seriously, and say, you know what, and I submit, we submit to the rule and the reign of Jesus Christ, and therefore his dominion will fill the earth, his authority is going to fill the earth, because we are going to take that mandate and move forward as the church as those commissioned by Jesus Christ. And we are going to say, your kingdom come, our Father. Your will be done, our Father, right? On the earth, not just in heaven, but on the earth as well. And I think that is a great place to kind of drop it, leave it with us, leave it, leave, leave it with that challenge 
think about it, pray about it, read some of these scriptural passages that I've gone to, and let's catch up next time as we talk more about the creation, the beginning, we'll get into the fall perhaps a little bit here, and discuss what God's purpose and plan is for his people, for mankind in the earth, in the earth. I love you. God bless you. I hope this has been helpful. Don't forget, again, I said at the beginning, I'll say it here too. If you want to support the ministry, you can go to breadbreakers.com. You can give there or money free. You can share this, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next podcast. See you then.